Well, I've been getting asked a lot of questions about these larger paintings, which I mostly post time lapses of because they do take so much time. And uh, a lot of the questions have, have been about how do I do certain objects throughout the painting? Uh, the cabin, the canoe, the foreground, the trees, obviously the smooth blends in the sky, the mountains, all these little aspects are things that I've, I get numerous questions about. And so I've been listening to you guys. I know that a lot of you want to, to see me share more of these larger paintings. And so I've decided to include you in on some of this. We're going to start with the sun. So this is basically the first layer of paint that I have on this new painting. There is a long ways to go before I can call this painting finished. But at this point, this is basically the underpainting. And what I want to do now is go back to the way background. We're going to start with the sky and I'm going to start refining the sky and then I'll refine the mountains. Then I'll refine the area kind of in the middle through here and then finish up with the water in the foreground as well as uh, the ground, the, the, the shoreline here and the canoe. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I take the sky from here to a beautiful, brilliant, smooth evening sky, morning sky, whatever you want to call it. But at this stage, this is just a rough mixture of paint. And just to kind of show you, I've got some black on my finger. I'm just going to wipe it on there just to really nail this home that that what I've done up to this point has absolutely no purpose, no meaning other than allow it allows me to visualize where I want this painting to go. So I'm going to cover everything that I've done this far. This is just a blueprint that I use to take my painting to that next step. So smeared black on it. I'm pretty sure that most of you can get to this point. A lot of it's very, very rough and blotchy. I just took paint and smeared it on to get a general idea of what I want. Now comes the fun part. We're going to dive into the sky and I'm going to show you exactly how I paint this sunset. And of course, I'm using my favorite paints. We have some Liquitex soft body for the white as well as the blue and orange. These are the cobalt blue, cad orange, and then naphthol red and black are my golden fluid acrylics. So, what I do is, and I know this is one of my favorite brushes, this is a scrumbler brush, scrumbling brush, scrumbler from Artist Loft. Princeton also makes one called the Round Blender. Those are pretty good too. This is the uh, Princeton version. They're basically the exact same thing. So what I'm gonna do is start by white, and I've done this already, but I'm gonna start by taking some white, and I really wanna brighten that sun. I know it's gonna be right there, so I just keep going back to it, making sure that's nice and bright. And what I do next is grab some orange paint and mix it in with the white, but just a small amount. Now, as we know, as we know, we're gonna have the oranges closest to the sun as we know that the, the sun glows from, from yellows to reds and then maybe grays, blues, violets, stuff like that off to the edges. So we're gonna start with the orange real close to the sun here. And I've got two brushes. I've got two of the same brush pretty much. And I start with the one with the paint and I go around the outside of that sun. And then I use the other one just to kind of blend it, fan it out, blend it. Sometimes I'll use my fingers to blend as well. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm not worried about anything other than the inside. What's, what's going on in the inner part here? The outside might be kind of rough. That's okay because we end up layering over the top of the outside edge and we leave what's closest to the sun. So I'm just trying to determine how far I want this color to go out. And it's always good to just kind of go further out than you might think you want it. So I kind of go way out here. Now the paint's starting to come off the brush and I can fan it 
and blend it a little bit more towards the edges. It's a lot easier when there's less paint on the brush. Okay, so now we've got a glow started right in the middle there. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my brushes. It's always good for these brilliant bright, especially when we're trying to go from oranges to reds and then to blues to wash our brushes. So I got my brushes washed. I'm going to start with my smaller one this time. and I'm going to grab some white. So after we've got some orange on here, the next thing we're going to have is more of a red scale. So I've got some red and I'm just mixing some red with white makes kind of a pink. But I'm going to grab some orange as well because we don't want that to be totally pink. We just want to pull this orange hue a little bit closer to that red spectrum. Okay, so we got a peachy color. Let's call it a peach. I think that works. So we take our peach. I'm going to get some water in my fingers and just kind of roll the paintbrush in a little bit of that water. Because I just want a small amount, and I can clean my fingers off. I just want a small amount of water on the brush just to keep it flowing. I've also got some more moisture on my clean brush. And I go right around the edge, and you see how we cover up that those black marks just so easily. So we go right around the edge, and we don't want to go too far before we decide to blend. So I went a little ways, now I'm just kind of fanning it out. Little ways, fanning it out. It's a very controlled process. It's a very tedious process, but even more importantly, it's a slow process. The slower we go, I think the better result that I'm gonna have. It's very easy to go really quick. So I'm just mixing up some more paint over here off to the side. And getting some water. Okay, got the paint back on the brush. That's got a little more color to it, that's all right. A little over the top. And kind of swirl it around. Now this will be more or less the first layer Let's call it our first refining layer. What we can do just to speed up the process of cover, covering the black is we can just go back over the black and kind of fix those because then when we get to them, it's going to be easier to cover. So it's just a good tip in case you make a mistake sometimes, like I might have done with my fingers there earlier. You just cover that up one piece at a time, just kinds of kind of gets that first layer started, so they're easier to cover up later. Okay, grabbing some more paint, and I'm gonna mix some, some color on the canvas there, and blend it out with this brush. Using light pressure as I get closer to the sun, I'll just kind of fan it out with that orange. Okay, now I think what I can do, I'm gonna mix the same color, just the same peachy color off to the side, but this time, I'm not going to add as much water, so there's going to be more coverage. Yeah, there we go. I like that word, coverage. There's going to be more coverage. Roll it on. Perfect. Really pushing hard with this dry brush here, this just to it really helps push it out around and blend it. So, of course, this isn't going to be perfect right off the bat, but boy, is it a lot closer to what we want it to be. Now, we've got some pinks, we've got some, so we're starting to get into the red tones. You would think, in your mind, and I, this is, I, I did this a lot when I was starting out, you would think that we want to go into the blues, but in fact, before we get to blue, what happens is, is if we mix blue, while we're starting into the reds, and we go from orange to red, obviously then we want maybe like violet blue. What happens is that if we go right into the blues, that's gonna make it really muddy looking because it's gonna mix with our red, it's gonna darken, it's not gonna have the glow effect. If we want the glow of a sun, we actually, instead of going to blue, we'll get to blues, but it'll be further back out here. 
Before we get to blues, what we actually want to do is get into a gray scale, which sounds weird, but it makes sense once we finish it. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Washing my brushes again. Let's just switch to one brush for now. See if I can't make it work. Allow you to see the palette a little more. So I'm going to take some white on my brush, just some white. And I'm going to pick up some of that peachy color because of course we want to transition into the blues. So we do want some of that color, some of that red. And I'm going to grab some black, carbon black. Okay, so now we kind of have a gray, a gray, light gray with a touch of that peachy color. I'm going to try it out here, too bright. Okay, that's going to be too bright. So more black. And maybe we'll just grab some more of that peachy color. Okay, try that out. Still too bright. So I, I go in steps. So we're just picking up a small amount of black, a little bit at a time. I grab a little more red. Okay, darker gray peach. That's gonna be more what we're looking for. So it's just kind of a gray tone. Now, I'm gonna set my palette down for now. I think I do want to go back to another brush. Um, trying to find. Okay, I'm gonna apologize. I'm gonna wash that big brush because I want the big brush to blend. I would rather have a small brush with paint and then blend with my larger brush. So I've got my larger brush clean and I'm picking up some paint with my small brush. And what I'm gonna do is the same process. We're gonna put that color on. I'm going to take the big one and fan it around, push it around. And push it around. It's a very slow process, but if we want that buttery smooth effect, boy, do you got to be patient. Because if you're not patient, you're going to make things muddy. You're going to screw things up. It's just going to take a lot more time if you're not patient from the start. So small steps. This is the beauty of acrylics. Now I can sure do this with oils, but the reason I want to do it with acrylics is because things I want things to change. The way that I get this entire painting to look really good in the end is, is allowing myself to have the ability to make changes when I want to in a snap of a finger. And so with acrylic painting dry so fast, I could change the sky in a heartbeat because this sun area is already dry. So I just like it. I like the option of being able to make changes if I need to. Um, but of course, you know, if you watch my videos that I do love oils as well. I just use them further later in the process, I should say. All right. So we're getting some nice gray mixed in. Now we don't have the perfect blend yet, but patience. It's a necessary step. I'm just mixing some more color off to the side. I kind of ran out. Let's try, kind of show you the method with my fingers here. Oh yeah, there we go. Dip my finger in water, bring it up. Look at how we can blend that. Woo! Looking good. Okay. Sometimes I just like to get down and dirty with the painting. Just use my hands. Dip my fingers in water. Wash them off with my rag. And repeat. Okay, so we're doing good. Kind of X motions, wash my fingers off, dry them off. Now, I'm gonna wash my brushes again. I kind of like 
my hands are really working good right now. It's just that right consistency. Okay, I'm going to step back, just take a real peek here. Okay, I need to pull the red back a bit right there. So, going back to kind of that peachy color. There we go. Look at that. A little water in my fingers. Perfect. Let's get some more brighter, brighter white, orange. See, we just need to pull that side back a little bit. This side over here. Wash my fingers again. Dip my brush in some water. Okay, let's add some more red. Got some more red now. Just kind of looking for areas. I need to work on this over here more. It's going to get to a point where I do need to let it dry because even though it's dry to the touch, a lot of times this gets dry to the touch, but then when you try to work it, then you can start lifting colors off. It gets really tricky. Sometimes you just need to let everything dry for like a half hour. I think I can keep going though. I think I can get away with it. I'm going to try to. Okay, that's looking better. We, we, we want it to kind of be even. It wasn't really even before. Okay. Looking, yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's looking all right. Okay, it's looking okay. Now, Let's move to the grays and then maybe this will be dry. Once we move this to the grays, that was my computer. It was really loud. Once we move to the grays or to the blues, maybe the rest of this will start to dry and we can go back over it a second time. So I'm gonna shift to some blues now. You gotta be very careful. So now we have this gray buffer around the sun, which will allow things to blend in without getting muddy. So I'm going to have some blue-gray here, mix some blue-gray. That's really bright. It needs to be darker. Black, blue. Try this again. Some blue gray. Mm, it's probably about right. Okay. Try our brush method again. See if that works. So we're going to mix in some of this blue gray. Ooh, that's too much water. But that's why we got a third option our hands. Blue gray. Now I'm gonna go right over the trees. I'm not worried about the trees because I'm focused on making sure our sky is the best that it can be. Trees can come later. They're just gonna have to wait. Okay, starting to look decent. Grabbing some more color. More water on my fingers, blending that around. You can still see that black I put on there. Whoops. Okay, not bad, not bad. I think I'm just picking up some more black and blue over here. I'm gonna try to pull that darker color in 
just a little bit. And I'm moving the brush really fast across the canvas. It's allowing it just to blend into the, the, the grain of the canvas a little bit easier. And I can take some water, kind of buff that, buff that in. More water. Ah. Okay, so it's still looking, this is like, I call it the ugly phase because everything's not smooth yet, but we're, we're building the colors up. We're not worried about things to be smooth because we're worried about building the colors correctly. And what happens is after you get past, there's a magical time when you get so many layers of paint on the canvas and once that dries, it, it changes the way a new layer of paint, uh, it, it changes the way that it works on the canvas. That layer of paint, when it becomes dry, it's a certain type of, of consistency, it's a certain type of surface that it just allows paint to, to blend differently. And that's when actually I think the magic happens. It's like the third or fourth layer of paint. So I'm just trying to get there at this point. So it becomes very challenging. And this is where it's so easy to get frustrated because you're going, oh my God, it's just not blending around these areas. I don't know what to do. Just keep working. That's the key. Keep going. Keep working. Acrylics are frustrating because we don't have patience. If we have patience, we can easily overcome that and get to where we want to get to with our painting. I think a lot of you guys ask me questions. I get at least a dozen emails a week from people who are pretty frustrated with acrylics, and I get it. It's tough. But if we have patience, you just keep moving. That's the key. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep painting, keep painting. And things all of a sudden just start to happen. So I'm going to go back over the same area, just buffing on some more color. I just want to build these layers. The fine tuning can come at the end, but if we don't work, if we don't build these layers in the beginning, we're never going to get there. More paint, more paint. That's the name of the game. Again, we're going back to that, that mindset of we're not worried about this outer edge. It's very hard looking right now. We're worried about the blend kind of towards the center more. Washing my brush. I'm just going to take some white and some orange. I'm not showing you how I'm mixing these colors, but it's really simple. I'm just taking white and orange. You guys know how I mix colors by now. White, orange together. I'm trying to match some color on the inside here. Sometimes you just got to pull the paint off your brush. I've just got a little bit of paint on the brush now. And just get a little bit on there. It's much easier to go little by little than getting a whole lot of paint. I think a lot of times when I get frustrated, it's because I have too much paint on my brush. Just got to be very careful about that. I'm starting to feel that layer coming on where it's getting a lot easier to blend. We just keep moving, keep blending. We're getting close. This is where each stroke doesn't make much of a difference, but if we just keep moving over time, it can make a huge difference. It's also starting to tack up just a little bit, which I don't like. I'm gonna let it dry. I'll switch. I've got a camera over here to my right. I'll switch the camera to the palette after I let it dry and you can kind of see me as I work on this next step. I'll allow you to uh, see what I'm doing with the palette. Now 
Now, this gets to a point where you don't need the fingers anymore. It's very easy to move the paint. Look at that blend starting to form right around the sun. It's starting to get smoother and smoother. Okay, we're gonna try one more thing here before I let it dry. I'm not sure if I can get away with it yet, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm just mixing some gray paint, some gray blue paint. I'm gonna try to blend the pink with the blue together just a little bit, just to get it started. See where I'm at. When I'm working with the blues, I'm kind of going back into the, the lighter colors, moving back towards the sun. It's a lot harder to go that way. It's much easier to take the lights and blend them into the, the darks. That's a good, good thing to rem remember. So if you ever get frustrated, if you ever get frustrated when you're trying to blend darks into the lights, it's very tough to do that. So now if I pick up that red, it's much easier for me to go back across the darker area. I got some lighter pink on my brush now. Okay, it's really getting overworked. It gets tacky. It gets tough to blend without removing the layer of paint underneath. So I'm gonna let this dry. And then we'll hopefully finish up. All right, now this should be nice and dry and hopefully it's going to be a lot easier to blend on. So when I get to this stage, like I said, it, it's, it's easier to blend lights into the darks than it is to blend the darks into the lights. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with the darks and then I'm going to go back to the lights and kind of fade it out into the darks. So I'm going to mix some darker some darker blue. So I've got some blue, got some white. Some black. And I don't want all that paint on my brush. So kind of dab it off, roll it off, and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that color. And I'm going to go up to the corner here. Ooh, that's still not dark enough. We're going to have to go pretty dark here. Okay, I'm going to try that. That's better. Nice dark color up in the corner. I'm going to take some water on my fingers. I'm going to try to fan that out. Wash my hands again. Okay, so we got some darks. I'm going to go with some white, add some more blue. Gonna roll that off on the brush again. Needs to be darker. That's not bad. So I'm just gonna pull it right up into that gray. And I'm gonna get some water on my fingers. Clean my hands again. Clean my hands one more time. I 
it's hard to darken things. You can see how difficult it is to get a blend. But I do want it to be darker. So you just kind of have to go through it. Now, I think, I think we're good. I could take, no, we're not going to go there. Okay. Some white. Some orange. And, you know, I think we'll just grab some red right away here. White, orange, some red. And I'm going to pull a lot of that off my brush. Ugh. Still needs to be more pink. Oh, geez. I blend that away, get some more white. Gets really tricky. So I've got kind of a pink. I'm just running it through that transition area. Very subtle changes, but we don't want to go big at this point. We want to make subtle, subtle, subtle changes. Okay. Now, I'll grab a little more pink. Very subtle. A little more white and orange. Try to fade it in. This is so tricky at this point. Just requires a lot of concentration and just, again, being patient. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking you're crazy for doing this because you could just blend it with oils. But I actually think that I can do it faster this way because by the time oils come into, by the time you do this in oils, I'm going to be having to go to the, you know, I want to keep continuing to the next portion of my painting. And if I were to do this in oils, it becomes very difficult to work with because it's going to be wet for a long time versus with acrylics here even though it might take me longer to do a nice even blend as soon as i'm done with it i'm on to the next thing and i don't have to worry about this drying and that's where i can catch up that's where i can make up lost time so acrylics make up time in the long run blending colors yeah you're right 
They're very hard to do, but I think it's worth it because I get things done on a day-to-day -day basis. Not in, Maybe not on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, but I get things done from day-to-day -day a lot quicker. Fine-tuning it. Yeah, we've got a little to work on there. Let's work on kind of the blend out towards the edge. Just taking some blue, some white, some gray. Wash my brush, dry it off. Just pick up some of that color. See what that's like. Not bad. I'm gonna get some water. A little bit there. Water on my fingers. Kind of blend it out. There, now we got the right amount of paint on our brush. I can kind of keep going. Stand back, look at I can see that we need more of this over there. So I'm going to pick up some white, it's a little bit of red. Ah, that's not going to work. Well, maybe that will work. Push that around enough. <laughs> kind of. I'll get it. Patience. Hoping that this would go better, but it's clearly not at this point. More gray. Ah, come on. Closer. Oh boy. You can feel it. I'm getting there. It's just not cooperating quite as quickly as I'd like it to. But I'm going to keep moving. This side, I like this side much better. And I'm kind of going in an X, making X motions. Well, it's looking all right. I don't like this at all up here. I'm 
more water. More black. I'm mixing a gray, darker gray, blue. I'm trying to find that magic color. Let's see what this looks like. Darker, need to go darker. At some point I gotta quit and switch to oils, but I'm not giving up quite yet. I'd rather get it as close as I can because I'm not gonna use oils until the very end and I don't like staring at something that's not done. A little more white. Uh, more red. Boy, it's just not my day. Again, the only reason I'm going through this is because I know it's going to save me time in the long run. It's so frustrating right now. But the long run is that I just worked over the sky and I can immediately go to the trees, go to the mountains, not have to worry about this being wet, like I said. A little more white. More water, tap it on my palette. All right, there we go, come on. It's looking decent. We're close. We're close. I might need to might need to just come back once this dries one more time. I can start to feel that magic layer coming on. I don't think I was there quite yet. It's starting to become easier and easier to blend, but there's still some imperfections throughout the sky, especially up here. Ah, that's not good at all. Well, maybe that actually helps. A little bit of a light color, kind of blended over the top. Yeah, that, that did help. Need some more blue, some black. Ooh, 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 that's a nice color. All right, there's an imperfection right there. There's some imperfections. This doesn't quite match this, and you need to match on both sides. 
I can't decide which side I like best, though. <laughs> I'm essentially glazing the colors now. I think we get some white and some red mixed with that blue. That's not a bad color. Maybe some more white. Starting to pull paint up on my palette, which I don't like, but uh, whatever, you can pick it off the canvas. There's an imperfection right there. It's dark. So it's about recognizing those imperfections. Can you see the imperfection and then go and fix it? That's really what you're trying to aim to do. So just add a little, a little bit of a light wash over that. Does that fix it? Stand back, meh. Maybe, maybe. It's getting better. I still need to work on the transitions between these these like violet areas and then the blues there's still like something not right when you kind of come into this area i think what i need to do is make some white some red touch of blue white red just a touch of blue Let's see what this does oh that's not bad Yeah, still need to work on the blues. Blues get hard. When you get into darks, it gets hard. This is not an easy thing to do. Um, at this point, what's gonna happen, and the reason why I'm not gonna go much further with these blues is because I'm gonna have trees that come up in between, and that's gonna cover a lot of imperfections, and then also that's when I'll start adding some oil paint over the top, so we'll hide a lot of the imperfections with trees, the tree branches, and then we'll use oils just to kind of smooth that out. But ah, it's getting close. It's getting really close. I'm going to take some white with my other brush, clean brush, add some more white to the sun. Okay, now let's... I'm going to take and kind of go back to my palette here, holding my palette. Let's try up here. I'm going to take, uh, let's just finish it up, have a little fun with these mountains. So I'm going to start with some pink. I'm going to go over the top of the mountains, basically with the same colors.
and then each step so i've got some some pink some violet there now i add some blue to that to make it violet i guess i should say There's our next mountain. Add more blue. changing the color of some of these mountains. I think it'd be better to have more violet in some of these distant ridges. Make Kind of just push them back a little further towards the sun. More depth in the painting overall that way. Have to grab some more color. What did I do? White, red, Blue, so the underside of these mountains, the bottom side is kind of kind of a lighter color. Gives it kind of that foggy look, which I like. More blue. You just a touch of black in there as well. Ooh, got some things on there. Ah, come on now. This won't be the only layer I put on the mountains either. It does get me started though. I really should be using a, a filbert brush for this with because it has a a nice hard edge. So if I can find it. There we go. Now these mountains are in trouble. Getting there.
add some black to this blue now. Need a clean area of my palette. Okay, now we're in business. Add that mountain right over the top. Another one right here. I like lots of layers in the mountains here. I'm going to kind of go back to that color I just had before. Try to add some separation between these two hills right here. Look at that, just that little bit. Notice I'm not worried about the trees yet in the foreground. Got time to fix those. Oh man. I don't know about you, but I am loving how everything is coming together. It's a lot of work, a lot of patience, but sure is worth it. Try to finish off this one up here, just like that. Put some water on my finger and just kind of blend that around. And that is one step closer to a beautiful painting. I don't want to mess with it anymore. I think for now I'm going to call it quits. And what I'm going to do from here is you can see we've got some beautiful layers, a, a nice ridge, a little bit lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter, sun glowing overhead. I've got a real nice transition around the sun itself, but it gets a little bit rough once we get kind of up into this area. The reason, like I said, I'm not going to worry about that is because I am, and I'll just show you just for, just for reference here, I am going to end up coming back over the top and adding pine trees. So as I do that and start to cover up some of this area as well as this area over here with these branches, things will start to make a lot of sense because I could get into a lot of this blue area but I might waste a lot of time because it could get covered up. So things will make sense once I do add those trees then from there I can just touch up imperfections in the sky. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to keep going and I'll bring you back in I think I've decided that I'll bring you back in for the house, the cabin, as well as the water, and uh, these nice big ponderosa pine trees. Hey, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to ask questions. You know what I say now. I will be happy to join the discussion, so leave those questions in the comments below. I promise to bring you back into this painting. I think the cabin will be the next thing on the list. I'm going to kind of work on the horizon and then work my way down. And I, I'm suspecting that the cabin will be next. And then, of course, I will bring you into the water and the tree as well. These big trees up here in the foreground and maybe in the foreground as well. We'll see how it goes. 
But I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to check out my free print giveaway as well as my eBay auctions and website. Both of those links are also in the description below. Thanks again so much for watching. See you next time.